This lesson is Add Logging to Web API Calls. Do you know why you should subscribe to YouTube channels? You'll get notifications when new videos appear. You'll get recommendations for related channels. It helps the channel grow, which allows me to create more videos for you. It helps attract others to my channel. Your like helps others find videos that are good. So please take the time to like and subscribe to my channel, Paul D. Sheriff. The objectives for this lesson are to find out why we log, the different logging libraries that are available to you, commonalities between these libraries, different log locations, controlling log levels, and logging to a file. There are a few reasons why we might want to add logging to our web API calls. Number one, it can track when users do things in your application. You can figure out which APIs are calling most often maybe. You can track exception. This is probably the number one reason why we put in logging. It can also help you troubleshoot any performance issues or just problems in your code. There are a few different logging libraries. There's the Microsoft.extensions.logging, and this provides the interface that all other libraries follow. And that include things like nlog, serilog, and log4net. All of those logging libraries I just mentioned all follow a common interface. The common methods that we use to log items are things like log, log critical, log debug, log error, log information, and log warning. There are a lot of places that you can put your log information, and most logging libraries can log to the console, to the debug window, to the event log if you're on Windows, to the queue. Now, this is actually preferred for production applications. You could also log to a file, to a table, send an email, lots of different places where you can put this logging information. It's all going to depend on your environment and how busy your application is. For the minimal API, we're typically going to inject the iLogger interface into our router class. And we're going to do that typically through the constructor. Um, not necessary. You could actually do it on a API by API basis if you want but it really doesn't matter. There is one instance of a logger, and so typically it goes into the constructor. Now that we've seen all the different things we can do with logging, let's take a look at our first demo of logging messages. Let's add another router class. Right mouse click on the router classes, add a class, and this one will be called log test router. Now let's override all of that code. So we're gonna create a typical router class where we have a log test router class that inherits from router base. This one we're going to do like I showed you on the slide where we're going to inject into the constructor this iLogger and then it wants a type. Well, the type is actually going to be the log test router that it's going into. And then you can see I've got a private read only field here called underscore logger. So we're going to assign to that in the constructor after we've set up the URL fragment and the tag name. Let's now add a protected virtual method called write log messages. And it's inside of here where I'm going to show you the different methods that you can call, just like we're on the slide there, where we do underscore logger dot log trace, log debug, log information, log warning, log error, log critical. And I think just from the method names, you can kind of figure out what each one of these is doing, right? So we, the log trace is kind of if you're tracing things throughout your application. Debug means only in debug time are we going to see those. Information, it's just something you want to put out there. A warning, an error, a critical error. These are the different methods. You choose which one you wish to use. I'm just going to go ahead and spit these out into the console window for right now. So let's go ahead and do our add routes here, and in our add routes is where we're going to do on line 23, app.mapget to our UL fragment write log messages. And that's going to then call the write log messages method that we wrote down there. In order to make this log test router class work, we're going to add it to our services container by doing the builder.services.addscoped router base log test router. When we run this, we now see we have a new API here called log test. And if we try this out and we execute, in the response it says check the console window. So there's always a little console window running 
And if we bring that up, we can see right here the different messages that were put out, an info, a warning, the fail, and the critical. Now there are different levels for logging and there's an enumeration for the levels. So trace is the lowest level, then debug, then information, then warning, then error, then critical, and then of course there's none. One thing you may have noticed is I had a few more log methods being called there in the code, but they didn't all show up in that window. Why not? Well, it all has to do with the configuration of the log level in the appsettings.development.json file. Microsoft configured the default log level to be information. So that means that trace and debug messages are not logged because they have a lower number than information on that log level enumeration. So what we want to do is change that default log level so we can see all of the logging information. So let's expand the app settings.json because you'll find the app settings.development.json file underneath that. Open that up. And here you can see that the default is set to information. Let's change that to trace. And let's save that. We'll go ahead and rerun the application and we will now invoke that same web API that write log messages. And then we'll go over and check our console window. And now you can see we have the trace, the debug, the info, the warning, the fail, and the critical. Now logging strings is one thing, but how about if we wanted to log an object like one of our product objects? Well, we have to serialize that object to JSON first, and we can do that by using the JSON serializer from the system.text.json namespace. So once you create this product entity and you set all those different properties, you can call JSON serializer.serialize on that entity, and it will give you a string of JSON. Let's go ahead and take a look at how to do that and log an object out through our logging system. So off camera, I went ahead and added a using statement to the top of my log test router class, system.text.json. At the bottom here, I added a new method called log product. Inside of here, I create a product entity object and I fill it up with some properties. And then on line 61, you see string JSON equals JSON serializer dot serialize a product and passing in that entity. And that gives me back the string that I can now pass to underscore logger dot log information product equals and then in replaceable parameter syntax, the curly braces, JSON, I pass that JSON string. The other thing that I did here is then in the add routes, on line 28, I added a new dot map get going to this log object, and I'm calling the log product method that I wrote there. Let's go ahead and run this. And we can now click on the log object, try it out, execute, go over to our console window, and now you should see that product object right there. All the information has now been displayed on the console window. Instead of just logging to the console window, let's log to a text file. So we can, like I mentioned, log to different storage locations. A database is not recommended, however. It's just too slow. If you really have a, a large site that's being hit a lot, a database would slow you down. So instead, you might want to use an in-memory queue and then use a task or a Windows service to move that queue data out to SQL Server. But logging to a text file is something that is very simple to do. You should be aware that you probably should be truncating this after it reaches a certain size or maybe create a new log file each day. And there are a lot of tools out there to do that. And let's take a look at one of them that we can use to log to a text file. Go over to your project, right mouse click and choose Manage New Get Packages. Click on the Browse tab over here and type in Seri Log dot ASP.NET Core and locate that particular package. Click on it. You should find at my current stage here, I'm at 6.1. 
go ahead and install that. If it asks you to accept some of these other dependencies, go ahead and say, I accept. And then what we want to do is also bring in the syncs.file. So this is what's called a file sync, part of the logging nomenclature, if you will, that you're going to sync these uh, messages. And I'm going to sync them into a file. And I'm going to go ahead and install this one as well. Now that I've got all of those installed, I can start using these. I'm going to go up to the top of my program.cs. I'm going to do a using on serilog, like so. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some code right down here, right after I build my routers as a service. And I'm going to say builder.host. So just like builder.services, there's a builder.host. I'm saying let's tie into this host and let's use serilog. And it's going to pass it in the context and another variable called lc. And it's on this lc that we're going to do an lc.writeto.counsel. So we're logging to the council. And then I also want to write to a logging file, lc.writeto.file. I'm going to put it into a logs folder. I'm going to call it log dash. And then after the dash, it's going to fill in with like some date time information. And then the second parameter there is the rolling interval. Well, I want to roll it every day. So it's going to start a new file every day. Now that means I need to go over here and right mouse click on the project again and add another new folder called logs. That'll give it the place that I'm going to write into. I'm going to open up now my log test router. And in every place where I said check console window, I'm going to add or log file here. I'll add it there. And I'll add it down here as well. And now if I've done everything correctly, let's go ahead and run this. Let's write our log messages. So we'll execute that. It says to check the window or log file. If we go over and we check our console window, we see they're still being written here. A little bit different now though. Notice that this is now Serilog that has taken over the logging process from Microsoft's built-in logging. Things look a little bit different. They've added basically a, a timestamp to everything. Their methods or their log levels are kind of, you know, highlighted in different colors. So just a different font. Let's go ahead and also then run, and I shouldn't have quit there. Let's go ahead and run this one more time. But let's also run logging the product object as well. So now that we've done that, we'll stop this. We'll go check our logs. And here we go. There's our file, log dash, and then today's date. And we come down here and we can see now, look here, you can see the information log entry, the warning log entry, the error log entry, the exception object, the critical log error. Then remember I stopped and I restarted. You can see here the product. So there we go, product ID 999, the name is a test product. Product number, test 001, color black, standard cost 5 list price. So it has logged that file or that product object as well out to our file. In this lesson, we learned about the most common exception logging libraries, how they adhere to a common logging interface, and we can control the log level through configuration settings. We can serialize an object for logging, and we can use Serilog to log to a text file. Coming up next, add exception handling to web API calls.